Hi there, I am Cotton and welcome to Cotton Hammer. Today we are once again going to look at one of Warhammer's cuddliest creatures, the Parasite of Mordrax. A special timid organism that just wants to be a good mom for future babies. And she's gonna make sure dad brings food to the table. So without any further faffing about, let's find out how a dedicated mom with a dream can destroy an entire planet. So who or rather what is the Parasite of Maltrax? The Parasite of Maltrax was first encountered on the fortress world of Maltrax. She is a rather unique Tyranid organism. Note she isn't unique in the sense of the Swarm Lord or Old One Eye, but rather in the sense of how she operates. But more about that later in the video. Let's first cover the history on why the Norn Queen saw it necessary to bless the galaxy with her in the first place. Like already mentioned, she was first spotted on Mortrex, when the planet was put under siege by High Fleet Kraken. Mortrex used to be a fortress world located somewhere in the Ultima Segmentum, which tells us fuck all since that region spans from the ghoul stars in the galactic north to all the way over to the Nephilim sector in the galactic south. Though we can take an educated guess that it has to be somewhere around here, because that's the path High Fleet Kraken took. Being a fortress world, Mordrex was obviously heavily defended, with strongholds, fortifications and vast bunker complexes stretching the entire surface. This caused quite a bit of problems for High Fleet Kraken. Since Kraken's modus operandi was to cover vast areas of the galaxy with dozens of smaller High Fleets, ensuring that when one Splinter Fleet got destroyed, there would be more than enough to reproduce the lost Tyranid lifeforms. This however caused Kraken to lag the overwhelming numbers required at specific points to break planets like Mortrax. After not even two weeks of fighting, there were already millions of dead Tyranid organisms littering the landscape from failed assaults on Mortrax's bastions. One particular Norn Queen already saw that this was a pointless endeavor and started experimenting with her genetic stocks. The results of those experimentations showed itself when some singular lone winged Tyranid creature dove down without warning into one of the trenches. As if it's not bad enough already when a giant Tyranid monstrosity is suddenly in the middle of your trench, biting, slashing and screeching profanities, gotcha, bitch. the real horror started when on top of the expected whirlwind of clawed limbs, it also stabbed at the guardsmen with its tail. Before they even had the chance to properly react to the visitor, it disappeared again. I can imagine that, for at least some moments, the only thing those guardsmen felt was relief that the bloody thing left again, quickly followed by a second feeling of something having the munchies. A lot of munchies. And that in fact, they were the munchies. The following moments of sheer agony, panic and the sounds of something moving through red tissue and snapping bones would quickly be followed by those same guardsmen bursting open in a shower of blood, organs and bits of ribcage, caused when the swarm of rippers bursts out instantly ready to bite into the closest non tyranid thing they can find. So yeah, to explain what exactly happened, the parasite of Mordrax has a special tail called a barbed ovipositor. She will stab some poor guardsmen with it and in that instant pump him full with ripper parasites. These are a larval state of the ripper. While usually pretty cute, they also have to eat to become big and strong. Just like mommy intended. And lucky for them, mommy just put them in a literal buffet. So the ripper parasites kicked into overdrive by adrenaline and other chemicals triggered with their injection will start to devour everything they can get between their tiny teeth. Due to the extreme metabolism, these rippers can grow from larval state to a full sized ripper in a matter of minutes. While that's already bad enough, 
Remember that our mom of the year doesn't inject a single lava. She injects a whole swarm. When she manages to infect multiple guardsmen at once, like in our earlier example, you are quickly faced with hundreds of the buggers. And while the friends of those former guardsmen are distracted by the rippers trying to bite their toes off, mom comes back and ejects more guardsmen to make lots of little siblings for our dear ripper friends. This can quickly spiral out of control, which is exactly what happens on Mortrex. Due to the nature of the planet, which is lots of underground bunker complexes, tight spaces and enclosed bastions, the guardsmen didn't have a way to deploy heavy ordnance or proper firing lines against the little tsunami of rippers flooding through the hallways, which, remember, started spawning in the midst of their lines. And with every strong point that got overrun, the parasite of Mortrex would infect more and more and more guardsmen, till the rippers numbered in the millions. The survivors locked themselves up in the last and most secure bastions, sometimes daring to venture out in armored vehicles. Just for those to be torn apart, bolt by bolt, by the rippers. Without the long lines of trenches and their gun emplacements, the rest of the Tyranid Swarm was able to overwhelm the hold up defenders. And Mortrex fell just two weeks after the introduction of the parasite of Mortrex into the local ecosystem. We only know about this because Mortrex eventually managed to send out an astropathic transmission that could pierce the shadow in the warp, which is a feat in and of itself, which told neighboring planets of the parasite of Mortrex, which is how it earned its name. No, the parasite of Mortrex is an interesting organism. She operates alone and doesn't require a direct link to the hive mind. She is however not a synapse creature of any kind, just a good mom, which underlines her lone operative methods. She relies a lot on sneaking, she can't camouflage like a lictor and she isn't that impressive in direct combat either. That's why she relies on sneak attacks and ambushes. Getting the river parasites in and then bolting away again, which is helped by her snake-like, highly mobile body and wings. It's suspected that the parasite of Mortrex is based on the warrior genus of the Tyranid. But with many modifications to relocate muscle mass from the legs into the barbed ovipositor tail, which is what allows her to inject a whole swarm of river parasites with just a single quick stab but leaves the legs as rather weak rib-like appendages. The upper two of the front limbs are also morphed into bat-like leathery wings, which is pretty typical for Tyranid flying creatures. The last thing of note about her biology has to be her extreme intelligence. While not as patient or plotting as a lictor, she is smart enough to plot angles of attack, wait for the right moment to strike, and to select specific targets. She is also intelligent enough to prevent being spotted too early and she can sneak into secure complexes and buildings, which is aided further by her snake-like body being able to squeeze into spaces far smaller than what you would expect for such a creature. Keep in mind that while the name Parasite of Mortwex and how that leads someone to speak about it, it's only singular because that is the creature's name. They are released on a planet in multitudes and thus can strike and start a ripper infestation at multiple locations at once. Though even a singular parasite of Mortrex can cause catastrophic or even apocalyptic damage. The worst that can happen is that one gets to a civilian populace. Imagine a single one getting into a hive city, with millions of civilians all locked up into a tight space, with barely any access to weapons besides underhive gangs and maybe a stray lead pipe. She would have no problem sneaking in, either approaching from the top and climbing down the spires to avoid detection, since she's not that big, 
or crawling in through one of the many sewer or transit ways. Disgusting! Once inside, there's nothing that can stop her at this point. Since she can take on an entire squad of trained guardsmen, when she can ambush them, she would have no problem taking on a small band of gangers. Or, more realistically, one of the many impoverished families. Once the first people are infected, we are already talking about dozens of rippers. Which in the tight spaces would be able to devour the neighbors so quickly that they would barely have time to scream in terror. While in the confusion, the parasite of Mordrex would keep stabbing and infecting more and more people. By the time the Arbites show up, which would take at least multiple minutes, we would already be talking about hundreds to thousands of rippers. Imagine kicking the door down to that hairblock. Yeah, you go first. And during all this fighting and confusion, she would just continuously infect more and more and more people. We are talking millions of rippers flooding through the hive streets in a matter of days, if she can be stopped. The only hope the hive would have at this point is to completely quarantine off the lower hive, bolt the exits down tight and request all the flamethrowers the planet has. But you would still need to deal with a population in the millions that probably wouldn't appreciate being locked up with a flying monster mommy and her millions of hungry babies. You can't even rely on letting people through that aren't infected. Because reports from Mortrex stated that sometimes they found guardsmen that survived an attack and which burst open into a swarms of rippers hours after they've been rescued. Which is most likely the parasite of Mortrex injecting her ripper parasites without the adrenaline boost to keep them more docile and calmer. She is intelligent enough to do that. Clever girl. I hope this kinda illustrates just how terrifying a single parasite of Mordrax is, let alone multiple of them. As a single entity, they are not even as dangerous as a single warrior. But if you let one sneak in and let it get away for even just a few hours, well, bend over and kiss your ass goodbye, cause it's gonna be ripper food. Officially, since Mordrex, she has never been seen anywhere else. But I would propose that this actually just means that she got a lot better at sneaking. Maybe since her initial success, she got upgraded further with Lictor-like camouflage. The reason why I insist so much that this bioform is still very active in the galaxy is Games Workshop itself. When you look at the official model, including the box, all of it is painted in the colors of High Fleet Leviathan. While the devouring of Mortrex and the original parasite of Mortrex were part of High Fleet Kraken. Old One Eye is still in the Behemoth colors, for example. So, unless Leviathan keeps a few around for decorative purposes, I'd wager they are still very active especially because they are very effective. And rips are cute, so don't see a reason why we should miss out on ways to make more of them. Anyway, this was it on the Parasite of Mordrex. Probably the most dedicated moms of the Tyranids, just short of the non queens themselves. I hope you liked the video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then please hit that like button. And please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos on the more niche subjects of 40k. And if you maybe got your own ideas for a video I could make, then don't hesitate to put that in the comments. I can't promise to make a video on every single idea suggested, since I'm just one man. One man that's really bad at editing. But I do take every suggestion to heart and already made a few videos that my dear viewers suggested. You might also want to join me on Twitter, fuck off Elon, I'm not gonna call it X, because I plan to do polls there for future content. Anyways, see y'all next time, cheers.